So with the 5.0 release of Unreal, I've noticed across many message boards and forums that a lot of people are actually pretty confused about some of the changes we've had so far. Notably with the Lumen Reflections, Refractions, and even things like how do we even turn on the Path Tracer. So this is going to be a very quick and dirty video just to help clarify a few issues that some of you may have run into. And I'll be pointing you towards some other videos on my channel that will go more in depth about those topics. Now for starters, Lumen does not require RTX or hardware ray tracing to work. UE5 will work with older GPUs like the 1070, the 1080. Lumen is not dependent on that. But those of you coming from UE4 will undoubtedly have noticed that the Lumen reflections and refraction are not nearly as good as they were with ray trace reflections in UE4. But don't worry, this is not a step back. There's just a few settings that we need to change to get both the benefits of the GI and Lumen and gorgeous ray trace reflections. And the easiest way to do that is when you're creating a brand new project, just turn on the little ray tracing checkbox right here. That's going to enable all of the ray tracing settings, but you're also going to keep Lumen as well. But of course, if you have an existing project that you want to just enable hardware ray tracing on, let's take a dive into the necessary project settings to get that to work. We need to go to the settings tab here go to project settings, and we're gonna go down to the rendering tab down here on the left-hand side, and scroll down, and the following settings are the one that you really need to have. Dynamic global illumination, set to lumen, reflection method, we can leave that at lumen for now. We can override this in the post-process volume later, but what we really want is support hardware ray tracing turned on, and here in the lumen tab, use hardware ray tracing when available. Make sure this checkbox is turned on as well. You may get a message that says something along the lines of enabling the skin cache when turning on the hardware ray tracing. Just click yes, you need to have that enabled. We're also gonna turn on the path tracing checkbox right here. I believe it's actually off by default. So if you wanna use the path tracer, you can turn it on right here. I have a more detailed tutorial on the path tracer right here. So check that out if that interests you. And one last thing that should be on by default, but isn't always, is we're gonna search for DirectX and be sure that it's set to DirectX 12 and DirectX 11 and 12 SM5 is turned on. I've seen some people whose project were set to DirectX 11 and that was breaking a whole bunch of things. So just keep that in mind, pro tip. Now, with these project settings changed, you may need to restart the engine. It's gonna to have to recompile the shaders, but once that's done, you're good to go. And now if we go to the lit tab here, you should have the path tracer show up and it'll work as intended. Just a bit of a quick segue here. The path tracer doesn't work with Nanite. If you turn the path tracer on with a whole bunch of Nanite meshes, it's only going to path trace the Nanite proxy mesh and not the actual high res Nanite mesh. So that is another thing you really need to keep in mind because Nanite is not exactly what we call real geo, it's virtualized geo, and the path tracer doesn't really know how to read that. It's the same thing if you use ray traced shadows and not the virtual shadow map that Lumen uses. The ray traced shadows will be tracing on the Nanite proxy mesh, not the high res models. So if you use hardware ray tracing for a few things, Nanite might not behave the way you expect it to. Just keep that in mind. Also, if you've noticed that you cannot find the Quixel Bridge or you can't access any of the Megascans assets directly within Unreal Engine 5 like you could previously, you're gonna to have to go into the Epic Games Launcher and in the Library tab, in the Search Vault section, you need to search for Bridge and install the Quixel Bridge plugin to your version of the engine. Once that is done, the Quixel Bridge plugin will work correctly as intended. So now with the project setting changed, I wanna show you some tips for getting better reflections and translucency and refraction using Lumen. So for starters, I've got a blank scene here. I'm going to make the lighting from scratch. So we're going to go to the Windows tab here, go to Environment Light Mixer, and I'm gonna create a skylight, atmospheric light zero, sky atmosphere, volumetric fog, and height fog. And so right now I have a very, very simple, quick and dirty scene. I'm going to click my skylight here and set it to a real-time capture like that. So now we get some proper sky bouncing in my scene and using the control L shortcut, I can move my sun like this. And as we can see, we get this nice, gorgeous indirect lighting on the underside of this very bare bones scene. This is just a quick demo scene. I know it's not super pretty, 
but it gets the point across. So taking a look at these five spheres here, I've got a black one, an 18% gray one, a white one. This here is supposed to be glass using the same ray trace glass material I used in this video right here, which again, you should go watch if you want to learn how to make a nice glass material. And here I've got a chrome material, a perfectly reflective chrome material, a mirror ball, if you will. I'm just gonna select these and hide them for now. The two problematic ones are these guys. Now, obviously this glass material looks like butt. It's really bad. Uh, we're not getting proper refractions in there. It just does not look right in any way. And on the right here, I've got a chrome material, but you'll see the reflections are kind of eh. They're very mediocre, not super great. Um, this is a classic case of lumen reflection. Now, the cool thing about lumen reflections is as I move the sun around, you actually see the global illumination being reflected in the chrome ball, which is great. We were never able to get global illumination to reflect with ray trace reflections in UE4. But, you know, the reflections are not super great. As I zoom in here, you'll see they're very blurry and not sharp. For people who work in ArchViz, I hear you. This does not hold up. This is usually fine for anything that's kind of like a soft chrome, a soft metal, like these tables here. Uh, this works fine. It's usually good enough. But for those of you who need the absolute best possible reflections, this is not good enough. So what do we do? There's a few things that we can do here. We're going to select our post-process volume here. And of course, make sure that it is unbound to make sure that the post-process volume affects the entire scene. And we're going to search for lumen. And here is where we have a whole bunch of options to choose from. The one that we want right here is the reflection section at the bottom. And we've got the lumen reflections quality. Now, if I zoom in here a little bit, now the lumen quality, if I toggle this between off, you'll see it softens a little bit. It doesn't really do that much. So I'm gonna leave this at two. But what really is interesting is the ray lighting mode. And if I click on this and set this from project default to hit lighting for reflections, notice how suddenly our reflections got a whole lot sharper. I'm going to zoom in as much as possible. Pay attention to the floor here. If I toggle this back to default, it went from this, which is very soft and kind of blurry, to this, which is much sharper and actually does look substantially better. It is quite a big improvement. I'm going to go over here where I have some other um, chrome balls here in, in the shadowed area just to get a different camera angle on this. I'm going to revert this to default. So this is the default lumen reflections. And this is the hit lighting for reflections. The reflections got a bit sharper, but notice the reflection of the reflection right here. As I zoom closer, we kind of see... This, we don't see the reflection of the reflection in the chrome ball. In theory, this chrome ball should be reflecting its neighbor here. And it sort of does, but only on a screen space basis. Okay, so it's not a perfect solution. It's a bit of a trade-off. You get some sharper, cleaner reflections at the cost of losing subsequent bounces. So if you have a lot of shiny object reflecting one another, this might not be the best approach. But I did want to point out that you can absolutely get sharper, cleaner reflection using lumen reflections with the hit lighting for reflections method here. Again, this is default settings and this is with the hit lighting reflections. So this is a very useful tip to know about. Now, as you know, this is not perfect. It's not exactly what we're looking for. So we're gonna go ahead and instead of using lumen reflections, we're going to use the hardware ray trace reflections which we have access to now because we changed our project settings earlier. So again, in the post-process volume, I'm going to search for ref for reflection. And you'll see here in the reflections method, lumen, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to set it to standalone ray traced deprecated. And you'll see our reflections got super tack sharp, like really, really crisp and clean reflections. Pay attention to the shadows in the reflection. This is lumen and this is hardware ray trace everything is way sharper way cleaner you get much better reflections that way but now you'll notice that we kind of lost our global illumination in our scene pay attention to the whole top of the chrome ball here 
hardware ray tracing never did reflect global illumination. And that's kind of a bummer. We kind of lost that nice lumen reflection feel here, right? If I reset this to lumen reflections, we get a better reflection. It's not as sharp, but it's a more accurate one. But we still have a few tricks up our sleeve. So again, I'm going to set my reflection method to ray trace in the post process volume. And we're going to go to the ray tracing reflection section here. And we're going to turn on a few things. I'm going to turn on max roughness, max bounces, and I'm going to set the max bounces to something like five. And before I hit five, I want you to pay attention to the black spots in the spheres here and the ceiling. So when I set this to something like five, you'll see suddenly, boom, we now have all of those subsequent bounces. Pay attention right here. This sphere is reflecting the reflection of the reflection of the reflection. It looks much more realistic. And we kind of got our reflections back on our roof. It's not quite the same as lumen reflections, right? If I go back to lumen reflections, we do get a more accurate visualization. And now we can also, in a max roughness, I'm going to set this to one for maximum quality. But keep in mind, this could have a performance impact on your scene. So again, getting a little bit better. And if you notice that your reflections are a little bit noisy, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this on YouTube because of the compression and the denoising that happens. Um, but my reflections are very noisy. So I can fix that by increasing the sample per pixel down here and set it to something like 10. And now, again, this will have a performance impact, but it will clean things up nicely. So again, not the perfect solution because you know, the reflection of the chrome balls here are not quite matching the environment they are in. Like we're not getting the same dark shadows as we did with the lumen reflection, right? Again, I'm going to toggle it back and forth just for demonstration purposes. This is with lumen reflections. You'll see the chrome balls here do seem to integrate into the scene much better than they did with the ray traced reflections and ray traced. So you know, it doesn't quite integrate as well, but sometimes you need this. Sometimes you need to get the better, crisper, sharper reflections, depending on your scene. So in true classic Unreal Engine fashion, you're going to have to pick the lesser of two evils here. You're going to have to pick and choose which of these options suits your specific use case the best. It's just something that you need to be aware of and art direct accordingly. Now with that out of the way, the last thing I want to touch base on is the refraction here. You'll see the refraction here. It looks really, really bad. And so this glass material is very simple. I just have a base color of zero, a specular of one, a roughness of 0.05, an opacity set to 0.1, and the refraction set to 1.5. 1.5 because the IOR or the index of refraction of glass is 1.5. Then I have my blend mode set to translucent and lighting mode set to surface forward shading. And that's it. Hit apply. I go way deeper into the glass setting in this video right here. But obviously this glass doesn't look very good. So what do we need to do? What do we need to change to get this to display properly the same way it did in UE4? So again, we're going to go in our post process volume. And in the search details panel of the post process volume, we're going to search for translucency. And we're going to change the type from raster to ray tracing. And now this is actually behaving the way it should be the same way it was in UE4. This is now possible all because of the project settings that we changed at the start of this video. So that's very, very important. And it should go without saying, but I'm going to say it again because people seem to not realize this. If you're going to be using hardware ray tracing, you need to have a ray tracing capable graphics card. So ideally an RTX GPU. I, I I shouldn't have to say it, but I'm going to say it. Now, the downside is we seem to have lost the shadows cast by the glass in UE5. In Unreal Engine 4.27, we did have glass casting shadows. So I'm not sure why we lost that. It kind of sucks because it was really cool to have. And we don't have any caustic. So we don't have any of that refraction being cast uh, on the ground. The only way to get shadows and proper caustics is with the path tracer. So I'm going to go ahead to the lit tab here, turn on the path tracing, and you'll see now glass looks way, way, way better. We're getting proper shadows 
and caustics being refracted here. If I use this glass material on one of the tables here, you'll see it is actually casting its correct shadows, it's refracting light in a really pleasant way, it looks way better than in regular lit mode. Like, this just doesn't... this looks weird. Real-time glass still does not look nearly as good as true pass trace glass. That's just a limitation of real-time engines at the moment. But at least now with ray trace translucency, uh, we can get proper refraction in our glass materials. And so that covers the main issues I've seen a lot of people struggle with this week. If you want to learn more about the path tracer or ray trace translucency or lumen or nanite, you can watch all of my videos on the topic right here. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you did, do consider subscribing because I do have a whole bunch more tutorials like this coming soon. So as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.